Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Amy. It is time for our April Q&A and the first question that I got, and in case you don't follow me on Instagram, please do. That's where I gather all the questions on my Instagram stories. The first question is by Lux Monologue. Why did you sell your Nano Speedy away? I didn't. It's right here. I did mention, however, hypothetical videos that if I were to let go of more handbags, because that's also a very popular Q&A question, uh, that it would be part of my chopping block. If you're curious about the reason, it's it's not so deep or anything like the, the Nano Speedy, there's nothing wrong with it. It's perfect. It's also a very good size for a nano bag. It also fits my phone, as you can see. There's really nothing wrong with it. I might not even let it go. From Maddie Shops, my friend Maddie. Hi, babe. Congrats on your beautiful new Kelly. She just got her very first Hermes bag. Her question is, what cities would you travel with your Hermes bags to? and where would you feel safe using? Asking for myself, wondering if I can bring Miss K, so Miss Kelly, to London, NYC. I would definitely travel with my Hermes bags. Uh, not all of them, but for example, the Mini Lindy, the Birkin, probably not, just because it's a top handle, unless it's for a road trip. So like for me to go to Seattle, it's like a three hour drive. But anywhere I have to go on a plane and then pack like a lot of things. And you know, you can't be too careful when you're like in transit, especially going through customs and going on a plane and you know, with all the restrictions with uh, luggages and all of that. For those instances, probably nothing with just top handle. With the Kelly, however, because it does have a strap, I would feel more at ease. Definitely the bigger cities that you mentioned, such as London, New York City, I would definitely travel to those places with my Kelly. Um, I would just be cautious as to, like, for that particular day where I'm going. So if I'm going to, like, a very touristy, like, very, very crowded place where I can't protect my bag or just be careful with my bag as much, then I will refrain from taking the Kelly out. Unless that day is more like of a shopping day or like a kind of like going to areas that are a little bit less crazy <laughs> i don't know how else to say it um then yeah i would just still bring the bags but i might not take it i might not necessarily take the kelly to every place i go if that makes sense having said that i feel like you know, going to New York City is very different from going to London, UK, for example. Like New York City is still, I feel like it's still within America. So it's still like within your country. And for me, it's still, you know, it's kind of like the neighbor country. So it's still close enough. Whereas going to London, UK, over 10 hours flight and all that, um, I feel like that is a bigger trip. So I might not even take my Kelly. It just depends on what the itinerary entails. If it's more of like a coffee shop, uh, shopping, um, you, you know, doing some attractions, but not too intense, that kind of trip, then yes, I'll take my Kelly with me. But if it's like a more involved and lots of attractions and just going to places that there's just all kinds of people and it's just so crowded because when it's crowded, it's just difficult um, to be careful with your bags. Then in that case, I just wouldn't take the Kelly because it's just it's just too involved. The farthest we've gone um, recently was to Hawaii, which is still kind of like a neighboring country, right? Like it's it's just six hours away. Um, so it's not too bad. I would definitely take it to Hawaii, but like would I take it to like a you know, three week trip to Europe? I'm not sure about that one yet, but it depends on the itinerary, definitely. Let me know if you're gonna bring it because your Kelly is just so fun. Beautiful color, love it. Next question's from Kat. My friend Kat L, uh, must choose one. <laughs> I will give Kat my Kelly 25 or the Tiffany lock bracelet, which I'm wearing right now. Um, Babe, I'll just give you the lock bracelet because you know why I can just buy it back really easily. With the Kelly, it took me so long to get it and so much effort and you know the journey, right? Like it's just so difficult. Money, time, stress, all of that combined just to get this dang bag. 
I'm not just gonna give it away that easily. Plus you already have one. Sorry, babe, you can't get my Kelly. I only have one. Unless I had many, many, many Kellys and like I hardly use them, then you can have my Kelly, but my Kelly is very precious to me. And plus you already have the perfect one. You have the gold color one. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you my bracelet. How about that? <laughs> the next question is by C Sun Loves. Um, not sure if I pronounced it right. Are are the Hermes platform sandals, the white ones that you sold, true to size? Will they fit a wider feet? I got them in a 37 and I usually am a 37 and a half. Uh, although I did find that they were a little short. So because I'm normally a 37 and a half, so I feel like they are true to the size. However, I think they are more for narrow or normal width. So if you have wide feet, I don't think they're suitable. I feel like they would pinch in that case because I don't have narrow feet, but I don't have wide feet either. So I'm kind of just in between. They were just a, like a touch short for me because they didn't have half sizes. So um, I would say they are true to size. Um, but if you have to size up or size down, that's when it might be problematic, I think. So definitely try them out. That's your best bet. From the same person, what do you think about Cartier d'Amour bracelet? The thin one with one diamond. The one that is quite dainty, right? With the one diamond. I think those bracelets are an amazing price point or maybe an amazing um, kind of like entry level but still very timeless piece because they're daintier they're not going to be as um kind of statement making as these bracelets like this one is the thin version of the love but because it is still um, a bangle i feel like you really do see them and you feel the substance whereas with the daintier chain bracelets they do have their place as well it just depends on your preference i definitely like dainty pieces sometimes as well i feel like it depends on what you're going after i will however say that because you're buying cartier it's still price quite high because it is a brand name, right? So um, I like it, but I don't know if I'll necessarily go for that piece if it was my first piece, because clearly I went for this one as my first piece and I really like, it's the best decision I've ever made. So um, I think that's where I kind of hesitate a little bit because I do like the piece. It's just that value wise, I feel like I get a lot more wear and value out of this one, if that makes sense. But I do like it. I do like it. Also from the same person regarding all the price increases, what is best to prioritize? Find jewelry or bags? That is a good question. And I, <laughs> you're probably not going to like my answer, but it, it's, it also depends because I feel like if you have a very big collection of a certain, like say bags, right? If you have already a big collection of bags, then it's not so important to concentrate on more bags anymore. I will also say in general that um, with bags, you could only wear them so often, right? And then like one style of bag, for example, this one, you can't just wear it with every outfit. Like you can't just wear it to work, travel, like it's too small for like a day-to-day -day travel. So with bags, you have to have a more involved collection, bigger collection that has all kinds of different styles to go with all kinds of different outfits. With fine jewelry especially, um, your thought process at choosing them is going to be a little bit more intimate and they're going to be pieces that will tend to be more long lasting and therefore you will get more cost per wear as well. And so, um, in that regard, I feel like fine jewelry is actually a better priority to prioritize, but it's not going to work for everyone. That's my point. My point is, even though fine jewelry, I feel like is a probably a better investment for your everyday cost per wear and value for money. Um, doesn't mean that bags are not. It just depends on what you're trying to achieve. The next question is by Selena Sapla. When and how would you ask your essay for your next quota bag? If you're like literally new to Hermes and you've never shopped there, then I think take your time to just, you know, buy a few things. Take a few visits time to to really communicate with their essay and get a feel of how your dynamic is with that person. Even though your essay might not initiate the conversation because, you know, not everyone's after a bag 
you can then like let that person know that you're interested because that is the whole point of having an essay so that they can look out for you right i think how is where it's it's gonna be very different for every individual because for me how i've approached it is that i i said that you know i have a wish list and i'm really interested in getting their bags too and i'm just wondering how it works and you just let the essay tell you how it works play by year two like if you feel like the conversation is going nowhere then there's no point in trying harder um so that's how i would go about it if i was literally completely brand new now that i've been with almez for three years i mention it whenever i feel like i can mention it like it just depends i don't think there is a certain like oh you must mention it when you're like hitting the quota like that type of thing you don't have to do that but obviously that is the rule of thumb in a way that um, if you've already gotten offered a bag very recently and you haven't bought anything in between then then i wouldn't mention it yet like i would just buy enough and then the conversation will just come up because you'd be like you know oh i wish that i have i don't know maybe a uh, this bag this next bag that i want to match these shoes like i don't know whatever like you just they will come up in a way and it will feel natural at that point so don't worry about when and how if you're already in this journey for a while because every essay and client relationship will be completely different in fact it might uh, still be different even if you are in with the same essay for many years but especially if you had to change essays <laughs> like in the middle of it like it's just all gonna be a whole brand new learning experience and everyone's journey is gonna be very very different the next question is by alexandra elena christia what's your favorite sunscreen for the face my favorite sunscreen is a white shirt and a hat that's my favorite sunscreen especially in the 80s 90s sunscreen was not a popular thing as far as i know or at least it wasn't popular among like immigrant parents i don't typically use sunblock every day if anything uh, because i do sometimes wear makeup um, i would make sure that the tinted moisturizer that i use do have some spf however if i'm going on a vacation trip like a tropical trip right or if i'm going on a day trip where i'm going to a beach area then yes i'm gonna put on sunscreen but i don't really have a favorite in the past decade i would say i've been into just like natural skincare natural makeup um yes i still use conventional stuff as well but like most of my skincare is natural so green beaver is a good canadian brand uh, Mad Hippie is another great brand. Uh, Davida, all physical sunblock. With physical sunblock, they typically leave like a white cast. I'll link to the ones that I mentioned, uh, the, the natural brands, which like I said, it's not everyone's cup of tea. Some people just prefer a chemical sunscreen. Next question is from Lizzie C. When are you headed to Paris? I wish I was headed to Paris right now, but um, we have no plans currently to travel to Europe yet. However, I would love to go back to Paris for, you know, another European trip. That would be nice. We were just talking about this with my brother and sister-in-law. It would be so nice. We were just reminiscing. Um, but if it does happen, because like I said before also, sometimes we do plan trips very spontaneously like if it just feels right we'll just plan it and just go within a few weeks then i'll let you know miles and sid what is the best coat you own oh wow i have several this one is from tagliatore it's a long one and it's in cashmere it's beautiful I always get compliment when i wear this um and i always feel so on like it's so it's just so put together so this is definitely one of them from maxmara you guys haven't seen this one yet but i bought this one um at the end of the winter time and i you know it came back in stock in my size so i had to get it so this one is a maxmara cube uh down coat it's a really long it's a really long sort of like almost like a trench uh like double-breasted long coat it has also a tie and i love this one because of the color the puffiness 
but also lightness of it and it's just so it's just so spot on and beautiful so this one is definitely one of my favorites my other maxmara that i really love is this one so this one is like a darker brown very long coat it's a really long coat and it's just so beautiful and put together because of the large lapel it's still a light fabric um, but it's so beautiful and it drapes so beautifully that brown one right i have the shorter version in black with the smaller lapel and that one is just so classic and it just you know when i don't know what to wear but i still want to put to be put together and i want something a little shorter the black one is perfect i love all of them because they all serve the outfit that i wear that day also by miles how do you spoil yourself <laughs> shopping <laughs> i think that's how i spoil myself because i am otherwise a very simple person because i don't eat out a lot and i also don't go out a lot my social life is quite minimal i think my biggest social presence is literally social media i don't get massages and all those things especially with the pandemic it's been so hard to feeling safe going back to doing these activities like getting massages getting <laughs> treatments like those things uh i'm very actually minimal in terms of that probably the times that i feel i am spoiling myself or that i feel more spoiled is when i'm traveling uh otherwise is when i'm just treating myself to whatever i buy daily self-care like just daily taking care of what i eat uh, my health um, what I put on my skin, what I put in my mouth, making sure I get good sleep, which is not going to happen all the time because that's my biggest problem. The maintenance part is really important and I feel like that way, by taking care of myself, I feel like I'm spoiling myself. And lastly, what makes you happy? Thanks, Amy. I feel like connections make me happy, so other than my own family and friends, uh, I feel like the connections I make on online virtually with you guys makes me happy. I feel like whenever I achieve something or that I am consistent at maintaining, I feel happy about. Um, anytime I make progress or if I'm successful in a project or whatnot, then I feel happy about the accomplishment. Shopping makes me happy because, you know, that feels like an accomplishment too because you know the the hard work has paid off material things make me happy but i think more importantly the intangible like the relationships and the opportunity to go on trips traveling with family with it's like the companionship and like the people that you surround with yourself uh, with for with yourself that um those are really truly the things that make me the happiest lux monologue if you could recommend only one fine jewelry from hermes which would it be and why i feel like the best investment from me has been something that i do wear so frequently and it's it's so different from everything else and no, it's not the Farandal necklace. I'm actually not wearing it today uh, because I was wearing other costume jewelry. I do have my eyes on more, by the way, but so far, the piece that really has been a standout and like, like I feel it's such a good purchase because I actually really enjoy it, use it, and I, I think it's the most unique and different uh, is my Kelly ring. So this one right here, the Kelly ring in itself is not the most expensive out there like it's a really well priced ring for what you get like it's a pretty good size ring other than the price it's also the design so the design itself is very interesting because it is just the kelly lock which um you know it, it's it's a signature for for almez but you can't find this particular ring or, or design anywhere else and if you are an Hermes lover you would probably like this lock anyway like you would probably just like this design in general so anything that comes with the kelly lock or the circuit or like any of those sort of like iconic shapes at Hermes you're probably just gonna really enjoy a lot i get a lot of compliments for this ring actually and even even just for myself who cares about what other people think when i look at my hands and i see this ring of course everything does you know 
a contribute to me liking everything but like this ring in itself is just such a good ring like it's such a good value for money really cool unique design that you don't get anywhere else um, and there's something about just even having a little bit of diamonds on on the ring like this it's not much it's really not much but just having the, those four little dots of diamonds also add to the design last question is by Ashley Licious how do you clean your Elmer's t-shirts and do you need to send them to a dry cleaner every time? So I have covered this in my favorites video. Anyway, I'll mention it again. Um, no, I don't send my stuff to a dry cleaner every time. Most of the time I just do spot cleaning and if I've worn it enough times, I will sometimes just wash it myself. Like I'll just hand wash my stuff. But if you're really worried about the material, because not all materials are recommended to be hand washed. For example, if it's just a cotton t-shirt, I'll just go ahead and hand wash it, even though it says to dry clean. Like, I'm okay with that, but I'm taking my own risk, obviously. I'm not saying that you should. Um, but I, I've been doing that and it's fine. When I do it myself, I'm very delicate and gentle with it. And also the other trick for dry cleaning, instead of bringing to the dry cleaner, which uh, one of you mentioned in the comment section, which is so helpful, dry cleaning kits that you can use at home. As long as you have a dryer at home, then you can use that kit. And I'm just gonna link it in the description below because you can just buy it on Amazon and it's really cool that you can just do dry cleaning at home nowadays as well. I've never tried it myself, so I can't tell you if it works well, but that subscriber that suggested it, she does all her dry cleaning herself using that kit. And it's not that expensive. I am, like I said, very simple, a lot of times very hands-on. I actually liked to know how things work, so I would do a lot of things by myself. Um, but that's my personality. Even what I eat and do is very simple. <laughs> anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this. If you're new to my channel, please do subscribe. And if you don't know already, I do a weekly live stream and you can also join my membership for more intimate and behind the scenes content. Thank you so much and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye!